Welcome to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. My name is Steve Damaris and I'm the Taylor Chair in Applied Big Game Research and Instruction at Mississippi State University. Thanks for joining me. I mentioned earlier that I was going to talk about food plot costs and this is a an analysis where we did uh, a number of years ago when we were doing some late rotation amazapir and fire treatments and we were looking at how much those improved the nutritional carrying capacity for deer and we wanted to look at the nutritional carrying capacity associated with food plots because I also mentioned earlier that food plots can be great but the limitation with them is that in a dry year, a summer food plot is not going to be productive, and though that's the time that they most need that summertime food plot. So food plots are great, but they're not the overall answer to the nutritional requirements of your deer population. You really should be managing underneath your crop trees as well. So we did a simple analysis. Uh, we'll call it the KISS principle economic analysis. We wanted to keep it simple, and we looked at the pounds per year produced of digestible protein over a 10-year planning window between these two different management scenarios. Now, digestible protein is not biomass. This is the, the pure protein. Like if you, go, if, you, if you work out and you want to replenish your muscles after you work out, you can make a protein shake and you go to the grocery store and you, you buy one of these plastic containers. It's basically full of digestible protein and some flavoring. So that's what I'm talking about with digestible protein. Looking at the herbicide and fire treatment under a late rotation stand of pine trees, we had the treatment cost of $180 per acre to spray the herbicide, the selective herbicide to kill the mid-story hardwoods that we did not want for either pine production or deer forage. We killed those back and we burned it that first winter. Then we had another, another two burns over the next 10 years to keep it in a favorable condition. So that would be a fire return interval of three to four years. In that scenario, we were able to produce 30 pounds of digestible protein per acre per year at a cost of 60 cents per pound because the, the upfront treatment costs are a one-time, and then you just have to pay for the additional burning costs during the, the next 10-year period. And so that overall 10-year cost runs up to 60 cents per pound of digestible protein. Now let's look at the cow pea food plots. In this study, we planted cow peas, which are a good quality food plot in the summertime in the south. They are not as preferable to deer as soybeans, but that's not bad because it actually, that lower preference allows, in most cases, the cow peas to get up and get established. Once they start flowering, that's when they really become attractive to the deer. There's something within their plant chemistry changes and they become much more attractive and the deer just come out and consume them with wild abandon. Cow peas, anytime you're planting an annual food plot, it's going to cost you money every year. Our cow pea food plots cost $149 per acre to plant. They produced quite a bit of food, 98 pounds per acre per year, and $1.52 per pound of digestible protein. Now, we did this study for two years. One year was a really good year. We produced a lot of cow peas. The other year, was a really dry summer and we didn't produce much cow pea. So if we always had really great years, we'd have probably had twice as much protein production from our food plots, but we don't always have great years. That's one of the limitations with food plots is they tend to be good when it's good and they tend to be bad when it's bad. And so food plots should never be considered as the only food management tool that you apply on your property. So the thing to keep in mind, herbicide, fire, treatment, more 
costly the first year, but afterwards very low cost per year. Doesn't produce as much, but if you look at the cost per pound, it's roughly a third the cost of producing forage in your food plot. And that forage under your crop trees is available every year, not just good years. Summer food plots might not be available in a drought year, and that's the year the deer need it the most, and it's least available. So, do your summer food plots. It's an important part of supplemental foraging, but make sure you're growing deer food underneath your pine trees, because those are also your crop trees that are gonna be your big dollar value return on investment for that stand. So I really like to promote the idea of creating quality deer forage underneath your crop trees. If you're doing that, you're managing your entire property for deer forage, and then you make your food plots truly supplemental. The deer can always find something under your trees to eat, as long as you have open canopy cover for them. And I've talked earlier about how canopy cover closes up periodically in a pine stand. So some of your pine stands are gonna be closed canopy and not have as much forage growing underneath them, but those can be thinned or harvested and start the rotation over again. So you're managing your pine stands across your property at different stages in the rotation and you're applying burning and selective herbicide control at different times. And so across your property, you have this really great smorgasbord of habitat for your deer population.